Welcome to the 2022 edition of Chicago from Scratch. Scratch. Chicago from Scratch is a collaborative composition program with us, students of the Chicago Musical Pathways Initiative. Over the last few months, we've explored different avenues of contemporary performance and composition. And then we made our own words. Which premiered on May 20th, 2022 at Elastic Arts in Chicago, Illinois, and are recorded here at Experimental Sound Studio. The 2022 edition of this program is generously supported by the Polk Bros Foundation, the Chicago Symphony Orchestra Association, Cliff Colnott, John Beerbussy, and numerous other organizations and individuals. To learn more, visit chicagofromscratch.com. Hi, my name is Miles Maglin. I'm 17 years old. I play the trumpet, and this is Sunny's at Grandma's. Sunny's at Grandma's is essentially a walk through my grandmother's house. It was done in memory of her passing January 2022. It captures some of the experiences I found were important to me while I was there. There are some references um, of Errol Gardner and Sam Cooke to sort of evoke my grief. And, you know, I hope you guys enjoy it. Um, I hope you can connect to it, sort of relate to your grandmother or whoever you, you um, are close to. And yeah, this piece starts off outside and when we enter, uh, the violin will be playing some long tones, indicating the warmthness of the inside. Because when I went over there, it was always hot. So uh, uh, the TV was always on, and my grandfather, especially, always like enjoy watching old westerns. So during the piece, you're gonna hear some background feedback of like old John Wayne movies and whatnot, and. There's uh, a mirror in the living room, which uh, sort of captures my reflection, of course, right? And I feel as if um, my reference to Sam Cooke in this piece um, shows my role in the family, and, and that's that. And now we're in the kitchen, where you're gonna hear, you know, the tea kettle, um, and then and after the kitchen, there's a scary storage area in there. It's always like dark and has like miscellaneous things in there that, you know, it's just, just everywhere, you know. And when I enter it, you know, it's, it's just scary to me. And it's, it's actually the um, passing point between the kitchen and then outside. So when I was over there, I would always like want to go outside because it was nice. So. Basically, you're gonna hear like a little screech from from the violin, um, indicating how scary it was. Cause I mean, like if you were there, you probably wanted like get get outside too. So, so now we're outside, and I was outside. I was always playing with my my cousins. We were either skateboarding or just dribbling around with a basketball. So you're gonna hear some um, sounds from that, and then we come back inside. And then there's this bigger living space where um, it's this long horizontal mirror that sort of can like connect um, my reference earlier to Sam Cooke and Errol Gardner. And in this living space, there's this candy jar sitting on the table, glass candy jar for a fact. Um, and when I was a kid, um, my, my cousins and I were always like playing around with it. So like the whole house could hear you were in the candy jar. So my grandmother would probably just tell us to stop. And after that, um, go outside and leave the house. Yeah. Okay, uh, my favorite part from Chicago from scratch was, I would say, looking at other interpretations of music, uh, notation, of course. Because, I mean, growing up, I just thought you just needed either solfege or just, you know, regular, um, you know, staff notes. Um, but no, I, I realized you could draw things and, you know, you could have a key that'll let the um, musician, you know, interpret what it means and, and, and how your piece should go. So, I mean, it, it just, it was just so much freedom. In, in this program and I'm really thankful for it, you know, and it it opened my mind a lot because I mean, you could, I feel like I was more creative 
and allowing my ideas to flow without having to worry about, well, is this musically correct or, you know, other things that goes into composing music. So yeah, no, I, I'm I'm relieved. I was relieved that like, oh wow, well, I, I could just, you know, talk to um Joe and Hannah about, you know, the things that I would like my piece to have and they would, you know, engage and, you know, ask me questions and pick my brain. So so this piece can be what I expected it to be. And yeah, yeah it, it it was. So thankful for Chicago from scratch and thank you for having me.
Um, hi, my name is Fabrizio Nelson. I'm 16 years old and I play the bassoon. I go to the Chicago High School for the Arts and my piece is titled Alliance. My piece Alliance was made with uh, Joe and Hannah. They reached out to some of us and we started working on pieces uh, some of us had never composed before. And I know for me at least this was a new experience. I had never composed something in this sort of style. Um, the score follows this format where there's no sheet music, but you are following lines on a page. And one of the most important things is that a lot of the actual notes are made up of shapes. So there's lines and circles, triangles that mix up some of the piece. So part of the reason this piece is called Alliance is because it's the two instruments trying to find how they can work together. So it starts off with them not being together, they're working against each other. But as we go towards the middle section, um, it they start to figure out how they can work together. And then by the end, they're making music together instead of battling each other and just trying to be the main voice the whole time. Um, when people hear this piece, I want them to sort of realize how the two instruments can come together because they start off in very different um, shapes and they sound very different from each other, but as the piece goes on, they start to communicate and I want people to take something away from that, how they can communicate with others and find almost a middle ground with each other. Um, that's what the whole piece is based on and that's shown in the score too. Um, when I started writing this piece, I wasn't too sure how I could notate any of it. So what I did was I just started writing down like the lines and what, what I wanted the percussion to do and how I wanted the violin to sort of interrupt part of the phrases. And so once I had that main concept, I just went from there. And that's why the piece um, sort of looks like just a bunch of shapes, but they're all placed very specifically. This got me thinking about how I can express ideas and music in ways that I've never thought of. And so um, the result is something that I'm really proud of. And I think that I hope people can take away something from this.
Hello, my name is Neil Icefield. I'm 13 years old and I play the violin and my piece is called Ukrainian Dreams and Cradles. I titled my piece Ukrainian Dream and Cradle because I wish to dedicate this composition to the pain and suffering that the Ukrainian people are going through during their present crisis. The piece begins with a melody that is reminiscent of a lullaby being sung by a mother to put her baby to sleep who thereafter departs the room. Here I take inspiration mainly from Brahms' lullaby and Stravinsky's Bersus from the Firebird, with help from Hannah using techniques such as flutando, tocasto to create a rocking belly. This follows a chaotic section, suggesting that the baby's peaceful sleep is disturbed by a bad dream, referring here to the chaos and disturbance happening in Ukraine right now. This section is inspired by rhythms from two of my favorite composers, Stravinsky and Sostakovich's use of per uh, percussive sound with again incredible help from Hannah in incorporating numerous sounds and techniques to bring this idea to life. There's then a subtle transition portion which signifies to the listener that the chaos is beginning to settle down. That doubles for the mother coming back to the baby and resigning the love light to soothe the baby and out it back to sleep. Finally, I end the piece with a repeat of the initial lullaby melody as an indication of the baby's drifting back to its peaceful state. I hope my composition is successful in sending the world's message of solidarity and support to the Ukrainian people in their time of suffering and in our sharing hope that peace would reign soon after the chaos, enabling the people to go back to their peaceful lives once again. I hope you enjoy the peace. This experience with CMPI was very fun and new, and I really enjoyed working with you guys and also composing my own piece. So, Composing is a lot harder than I thought it was and a lot more fun too.
Hi, my name is Michael Hoya. I'm 12 years old. I play the violin and the name of my piece is called The Beautiful Journey. So my piece is about uh, what good dreams are like, like, or what had type, what is, what usually happens in a good dream. Like it's a really good dream where you can kind of expect a lot of good fortune and to come with your way. And it's about Oh, the, it's, an, it's about peace and harmony. This piece tells the story of a young bo boy doing, uh, going through a, dr a dream, a very strange dream that he actually never really had in his life since he had a lot of bad luck. So we begin in a meadow, surround, more like a garden. Surrounded by green leaves, beautiful flowers such as red roses, and we walk in, in the direction of the sunset. And on the way to, uh, while we're walking in the direction of the sunset, we come across across a a very beautiful spirit, and who is also very nice. She is in a flowery dress, has her hair well done and, and neat and, and, and curled, and she has a golden crown in her head. And then she takes us to a gate it, that it has a portal behind it. it. The young boy opens the gate and steps through the portal, no, not knowing where it's going to lead him to. And in this part of the music, nine, measures 9 to 10, is about uh, what it, what, is, uh, what goes on when he enters the portal and what it feels like to go, to tra to go through time and, and, and to travel to different d dimensions. And he arrives at Dreamland, as they say. They were the where the where the people who oh, happily greet him in the fanfare plays. He's, this is the inner and this is the part where he's in an inner dream. And he's and he's about to be a go on to his next destination. And by getting there he's getting carried by a, a massive cloud that acts like a transportation vehicle in dreamland and he's dropped up at an x a golden x which is which is also a portal to the land of only joy and happy people and at this part and at this point he's he went through the portal and arrived at the place of only joy and happiness so he's having fun and uh, meeting lots of of uh, good good-hearted happy people and after this is the the ruler of happy land and gave him golden wings as he and he uses those wings to fly higher and higher and that's where the dream ends and he wakes up actually feeling good Hid this time instead of always feeling so down it like the la like he has been for the last couple of days until that dr dream came upon him and so that's what my piece is about the process was very interesting for me i wanted to do i wanted to, first off when i had to, when i came across the opportunity to to like for some people to help me create a piece i wanted some to create something unique something that would speak it would speak to people's hearts and something that would not necessarily blow the world away but make them understand make the people of the world understand each other a little bit better or or make them like happier a, a first one and I was told about this I didn't it, I really wanted to try it out since and but before I never really um, made my own piece, except on some compo composing software things like Flat. And we, 
and I thought to myself, yes, yes, I would like to try this out. So I grabbed the spot in there and and I waited for my first meeting to come. And during the first meeting, hang at I thought they I thought, oh wait, we're gonna get yeah, if we're just gonna introduce ourselves, don't worry, and then and the and then in the next meeting I thought it was gonna be like, Okay guys, let's get straight into composing, but no, it was no, but it was actually way more fun to do other stuff like learning about the different types of music notations and how and learning how to compose differently other than the traditional way which which is with those those quarter notes half notes all that stuff overall it was pretty interesting to meet new people have fun play games such as mad libs as in and like hey trying to write your own piece in different in a different style of notation yep and it, the, and after that it got really fun because I got to create I got to create my, my piece and I was and I was the boss who can and like adjust it any time I want and it and I and I was excited when I found out that I actually have my own premiere and my own recording session like this one now Overall, it was really good for me. So thank it, so thank you both for offering the opportunity to me. Mm -hmm.